Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. We're going to start off by having a word of prayer as we turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. And that's a powerful scripture in and of itself. Father, we pray right now your blessings upon your word and that you'll touch the hearts and souls of each and every person here this morning. May your anointing rest upon them, Lord, as we go into this service. May your hands be upon each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 in, in the Old Testament. It said, the words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Uh, what does man gain from all this labor in which he tours under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. Let's drop down uh, to uh, uh, verse, let's go to verse 16. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom and more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to understand understanding of wisdom and also of the madness and folly. I have learned this too. It is chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow and the more knowledge, the more grief. So let's uh, and look at chapter 3 and verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Let me read that portion again. There is a time for everything. Chapter 3, verse 1. And a season for every activity under heaven. Father, we pray that your blessings will be upon us this morning, that you would anoint your word as you always do for your will, your purpose, and plan. Father, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you know that there is a season for everything? There is a season for everything. And the word of God, it says, that nothing remains the same except the word of God. Nothing remains the same except the word of God and his promises. And that's quite phenomenal in and of itself. Nothing remains the same except the word of God and his promises. God's word tells us that nothing is permanent. We should know that just by being on the face of this earth that things are going to change. There is commonly four seasons in a year. You and I know this. There's spring, there's summer, there's fall, and there's winter. Now, I can tell you that some people love spring more than they love summer. Some people love summer, and yet they can't wait until the fall of the year comes where they can actually look and see the changing of the leaves of different seasons. Now, you can't necessarily always see that in the Bay Area, but you don't have to drive far uh, a few hours, and you can see the changing of the leaves of the trees in the fall of the year and how the leaves fall off because it's getting prepared for winter. And then there are people who rather have it cold than it to be hot on the fall of the year. So, but one thing each one of those seasons have in common is that they are not going to stay the same. Every season changes. And each one of those seasons gives you and I hope for the future. I don't know about you, but have you noticed that after Christmas, and we got Christmas coming up in a few weeks, I'm sure. It's hard to even think about that at this point in time. But after Christmas, there is a sale. And people go crazy after the sale. 
They're trying to get the best deals. All the Christmas decorations, the wrapping paper, the cards, the gift cards, whatever it may be, because there's a sale and they're saving that for next year because they are preparing for the future. I remember a few years back, my kids went in together and bought me a Nordstrom's card, a gift card. And I waited. I'm one of those people that if I get a gift card, I usually like to go and spend it right away. I'm just that type of guy. I don't want to hold on to my gift card. I might lose it. I want to make sure that it's in good hands with me. So I waited, and it was about the spring of the year. And I decided to walk into Nordstrom's. And when I walked into Nordstrom's, there was a winter coat that caught the peripheral view of my eye. And I looked at that coat, and I said to myself, if that coat fits me, and if it's the right price, and if it fits me without me having to tailor it, I'm going to buy that coat. I went over there, and it was the only coat it was. It was an overcoat. It was a, a, a winter coat. I tried it on, and it perfectly fit. Usually, my sleeves are always off because I'm a short guy. And my sleeves fit perfect. The coat was perfect. I could zip it up, and it was perfect. And I looked at the price. And the price was 50% off. It too was perfectly matched with my gift card. And I said, I'm buying this. And you know what? I said to myself, I'm buying this for winter, for next year, and the seasons to come. I still have the coat. I've never known anyone, unless their material or their clothes are old, that they throw away their winter clothes after winter is over. Or they throw away their spring clothes or summer clothes after spring and summer is over because winter is coming. No, they store it up and they prepare for the future for the following year because everything is a season. You see... Let me go through some things that may help you out. In fact, some of the best deals occur when the season is over. So, and I can tell you this, seasons are temporary. You need to understand that. Seasons are temporary. They are not permanent. Now, sometimes when we go through seasons in our life, it feels as though the season is for eternity. I want to ask you a question. How many of you who have gone through some changes or seen some changes in your life in the last two years? How many of you have seen some changes or different seasons in your life in the last year? I go so far as to say, how many of you have seen some changes or some seasons take place in your life in the last three months? Because seasons never last forever. I remember in 1983, November the 17th, my brother's birthday. I got laid off. I was called in the office, and they said, we are laying you off. I was a good worker, never missed any days. And I'm saying, I got laid off, and I was devastated. And my life turned upside down in a, in a matter of moments. And an individual told me this. He said, and he laughed at me. And he said, it's just for a season. And he was laughing, but he was laughing to ridicule me because he knew the position that I had. And he said, it's just for a season and it's a temporary setback. You're one of us now. So I got a job from an electrician to a janitor. 
And I took the job, and I've told you the story, because of my wife had told me, she said, take the job until you find something better because you have benefits. And I did. And it was a season that I went to, and I was, it, that season felt like it was devastating. It was a crisis. It was painful. I lost money. By time of the day, I had to change in order to work in that. I didn't have any formal education, so I had to do what I had to do in order to provide for my family and my wife. And yet, I knew that it was devastating to me, and it felt like this season would never, ever go away. The Spirit of God spoke to me and said, be still and know that I am God. You see, the success of yours in my life is to find a way to outlast the season of your crisis. I want to say that again. The success of yours in my life is to find a way to outlast the season of of your crisis. That's the only way that we can see the future and the hope of tomorrow by saying this season that I am in will never last forever. It feels like it. Have you ever been going through some changes in life and you felt like this change is never going to end? It's going to always be this way. I got news for you. Nothing remains the same, my friend. Nothing on the face of this earth is permanent except God and God's word and his promises. Amen. That's the only thing that is permanent. Listen, we even us are like a flower that's for a moment that blooms and it withers and it passes away. That's who we are. But the promises of God for the child of God are yea and amen. Scripture says this right here in Romans, and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was able to perform it. In the Psalm 77 verse 8, it said, has this loving kindness ceased forever? It's a question that is being asked rhetorically. Has this promise come to an end forever? I say no. His promises endure forever for you, for you, for me, and every one of us who are believers in the person of Jesus Christ. But the point of it is, so many times we get stuck in our crisis. We get stuck in our situations, we get stuck in our seasons and we think this is the end of our life. I got news for you. If you endure the crisis, if you go through the season, if you see the future and the hope for tomorrow, you will get through that crisis and that season will pass. Amen. Now what are seasons for? Seasons are to train us, to extend our faith, to trust in God with all our heart, to lean not to yours and my understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, no matter what the crisis may be or may be. Maybe you're in a situation of, in deciding on, my God, am I going to move? Am I going to get in a new place? Am I going to get another job? How is the finances going to come through? What are we going to do? Uh, how are we going to do this? And what changes are we that's going to occur in the process of this? It is all a part of God's plan as we move forward and trust him. You see, the, the most important ingredient, folks, is to keep your eyes on the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things should be added unto you. Crisis are not a permanent condition because if you think about it, God has no crisis in his life. Have you ever thought about that? There is no Christ. There is nothing that brings anxiety to Jesus. There is nothing that makes Jesus second guess the things of the world. There is nothing that brings about uh, a condition in Jesus and God the Father and the Holy Spirit's mind that say, I made a mistake. No, no, no. He is sovereign. He knows all things. He is omnipotent. He's in every place. 
He knows our future. We are not to despair about what's going on in our life. But we can have hope in the one who has brought us thus far. I, you know, when, when I stop and think about that, crises are not a permanent condition of God because God does not have crisis. And if, now, 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 now help me to get this. Get this right here. You don't get anything else this morning, but get this. If God is our father and we are his children and his children are then considered that we are in a crisis or a season, we must understand that the crisis and the season that God the Father is overshadowing us is just to test our faith to be obedient and to continue to believe him so our faith and our obedience will grow stronger that we will not give up on him. Can anybody in those masks say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Praise God. Seasons in our lives comes only to test our faith to change yours and my momentum, to move us from our thinking or doing into another direction. Now imagine, just look back five years from where you are now. What if you had stayed in the same place, had the same mindset, did the same thing the last five years, and there was no changes in your life? except you're growing older. That's quite depressing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think there is a person here that can look back in the last five years and say, there's not been any change in my life. I said, well, did you get another car? Did you just change your driver's license? Did you have to apply for something? Did you have to eat different food? Did you change your diet? Did you, is your eyesight the same or your weight the same or yeah, did you do anything different in your home? Did you form different relationships? Did you read your Bible? Did you get closer to God? Did you change your jobs? Did you move in, a, in another city or another state or, or another home? Or whatever the case may be, you changed! You changed! Because you went through a season. And that season has brought you to another place in time. If you survive, of course you did, because you have to adapt, you have to adjust, you have to renew, you have to reset, and you have to move forward because seasons are temporary. Let me tell you something. One of the most dev devastating things to a man is to lose his place of employment and don't have anywhere to go, and the finances are not there. And he knows that what he is made out of is to support his family and to do the right thing. Any man that's worth his work wants to work and do that. I got to do that. And you know what I did? Because I wasn't making the money that I, I was making before, I got another job because I had to make ends meet because it just wasn't enough. But God, in his infinite wisdom, spoke to my heart and said, this is just a season. You will get through this. See, now, if you think about it, we have been shut down in this pandemic in such a way until the, the beginning of March of 2020. Now they're saying that there's possibly an antidote that's going to come out in January or February or even as early as the end of De uh, December. And that probably 20 to 50 million people will, be, uh, uh, will get this antidote by June of next year, 2021. Now, I don't know how that's going to work, but I want to tell you something. You see, I don't put my trust in humanity. Although I have a hope for the future, and I believe that that can happen, 
I put my hope in the person of Jesus Christ. Now don't think that, oh, he's saying this because he's a preacher. and that. No, my hope is in Jesus that he's going to give a mindset to scientists and doctors to help them get to the antidote that will perhaps do the diagnosis to make sure that that is the right antidote for those individuals or the vaccine Amen. to help people. I believe that. I believe that because this pandemic is a season. This cannot last forever. We will look back over life five to ten years from now and say, remember when? Remember when? Nothing stays the same. Suppose you have a newborn baby and ten years go by and that baby is still a newborn. Wouldn't you say that there is something wrong with this? When is he or she going to walk or talk or grow and go to school and finish school and go to college and start a life? Those are seasons in our life. I, I, I remember some years ago I kind of did an analysis of my own life and I sat down and I said, wow, Lord, what is this all about? So. I get married, I find a spouse, I get married. Uh, I have children, I, have, I gotta raise them, get them to school, send them through college, see them get married, maybe they have kids and whatnot. And I'm saying, Lord, does this ever end? And it goes on and on and on and on and on. It never ends, folks. Long after I'm gone, there'll be other generations that rises up before you and I. When you are gone and your children have gotten grown and they raise kids and your grandchildren have gotten grown and they raise kids, the only legacy that you and I could possibly leave is not so much materially wealth or our education, but who do we trust in to get us through those seasons? His name is Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We can have a lot of faith in the things of this world and our material possessions or what we have accomplished in life and those accolades, they are okay. But there is no accolade that's gonna beat the cross. There's no accolade that's gonna come along and say, hey, he finished well. That's, that's the main accolade that you and I wanna get. We wanna hear him say, son, you have fought a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's later for you a crown of righteousness. And not unto you only, but unto all of them also who love his appearing. I love that scripture. Brother, we fight not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and spiritual dominions that are in high places. It's now to him that is able to keep you and I from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with a seedly joy. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That we serve a Christ that he says, I'm going to present you faultless before the presence of my glory with a seedly joy. That can happen to you and I as we are obedient, as we stand and trust God for whatever we are doing in life. I don't know what you are doing in life. And I certainly can't read your faces or your mind this morning, especially that you have masks on your face. You know, usually a pastor can kind of read the audience. It's hard to read the audience now that you got masks on your face. You can read me and my expressions because I don't have one on up here, but I will put it on as soon as I get through preaching. But the bottom line is this right here. Who is your trust and faith and obedience and your alliance with. My alliance is with the person of Christ Jesus. It's not with the government. Although I am obedient and responsible for submitting to the government authorities and my local officials and whatever they ask to do, as long as it's in the right ethical and moral standards that we live uh, through the, uh, those codes, we can deal with that. As long as there's going to be equality. You know, I can't, I, sh I should be able to drive down the freeway and do the speed limit and not be pulled over if everybody else is doing the same speed limit. But if I'm pinned or pulled over because there's an injustice about the color of my skin or, or whatever the case may be, or my car, it's not the right car that is feasible for the police officer, then that's a problem. But I don't have to worry, I should not have to worry about driving down the street. See, because my faith is in Jesus. Folks, I want to tell you something. 
The only assurance that you and I have, here's the only assurance that you and I have for now to eternity as we go through seasons of life. You must ask yourself this right here. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? But well, what in the world is the Lamb's book of life? The, the, the Lamb's Book of Life is the book that Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God is keeping personally on you and I. Have you committed your life to him? Are you living for him? Are you obedient to him? Do you have faith in him? Do you trust him with all your heart? Not yours, but his. Do you trust him? Do you believe that if anything was to happen to you right today, that you are going to eternity knowing Jesus and you'll see your creator. That's the key. That's the accolade that you want right there. I made it. Three words. I made it. Hallelujah. That's what you want, right? You want your name placed in that book. You want when the road calls up yonder, you, your name will be in there. I've often used this example. You ever gone anywhere and they're doing a roll call and they're checking your name and they call your name and they say Pre present or here? You know, I remember when I was in school, I wanted to make sure that my name was on the roster. And, and there was a couple of classes, my name was not on the roster. And they said, uh, is there anybody that I did not call? And I would raise my hands. He said, what's your name, sir? I said, John Withers. He said, John, you need to leave the class. Your name is not on the roll. I said, I prefer to stay in until after the class. He said, suit yourself. But your name is not on the roll. I said, oh, my, and I'm saying to myself, my name is going to get on the roll. And by the time the class had end, this did not happen in every case, but a few times it actually happened. A couple of people would come to me and say, I'm going to take my name off the roll. I don't want to be in this class. You can take my spot. And when I told the professor, we went up there, we talked, he said, well, Mr. Withers, seems like your name is on the road. You see, and that's what you want to hear, right? That's what you want to hear when Jesus said, your name is on the road. You're, you want your name to be called when it's on the road. Folks, you can only do that through the seasons of life as you trust in God. Folks, thank you this morning for joining us for this wonderful service as we talk about seasons of our life. They won't last forever. And we are in a season right now. We ask you God's blessings will be upon your life. And again, uh, we ask that you will continue to support this ministry as we believe in God as to what he's going to be doing in the near distant future in each and every one of our lives. Thank you for being a part of this great service here this morning at New Hope Community Church. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, I pray you will bless each and every person who's listening and have listening to this sermon. Lord, that your blessings will rest upon our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.